Hello and welcome to this basic, very beginner introduction to our negotiation class, which I hope you can join. I'm going to just very quickly give an overview, and then later in other videos you can see much more detail. I'm Professor Warden, and this is my friend, my pet Tux, and he's going to help us throughout this class. The first thing I want to introduce is this negotiation class is totally online and has some very unique parts to it. The most unique part is we're going to do a role-playing game. So let's begin by finding out how we can find out more about this. You can go to my website, which is cwarden.org. And at my website, you can learn a few things about me and see the things I've been up to. And if you go down, you can see a link to classes. Of course, you can find this at our school website also. Our iLearning system has an introduction to our class. But here's a website I've built that's very simple. And it shows you the two classes that I have online every year. So I hope you can take an opportunity to take these classes. It's very convenient because they're 100% online. Today I'm going to do a very quick introduction to the negotiation class. The negotiation class has a syllabus and online lectures and an introduction to the RPG, which I'm going to kind of begin right now. So before I go any further, let me just do a very basic introduction about RPGs. Maybe you're familiar with RPGs. Maybe you've played an RPG before, which is role-playing game. There are different types of role-playing games. You're probably familiar with video game role-playing games. When I grew up, we didn't have video games until eh, later when I was a teenager. But when I was young, we didn't have that. We only played board games or tabletop games. So the history of role-playing is this tabletop game kind of game. Maybe you've seen some videos of it, or maybe you've seen a movie that has this in it. These are still very popular. In fact, they're growing in popularity. And one reason it's growing in popularity is people can play this online with other players. You don't need to be in the same room. That's very cool. Tabletops are one type of RPG. There's another one called live action or LARPing. L-A-R-P live action role playing. So this LARP or LARP or LARPing is another way to role play. And when I was a college student, we'd have a times once a year usually when they had a big activity for a week or so, you could go and do this kind of LARPing. Of course, now there's a lot of this kind of dressing up and role playing and making costumes and things like that. Very, very popular. So I think you know exactly what we're talking about. Of course, you have role-playing inside video games, which I think is the most popular and common type of role-playing. You also have single-person role-playing, which is you can play alone. And I do this sometimes. I have a book or some rules or a video game, and you can play by yourself. Or you can have multiplayer online or multiplayer in person or large-scale multiplayers games. So there's all different kinds of ways to have this kind of role-playing. Of course, the key to role-playing is you have people, and in this case, me or you, and you sometimes have a game master or a program or computer or some kind of system, and then you have characters that you play. You also have non-player characters. So the characters are me, I play someone inside the game, or you, you pretend you're someone inside the game. And non-player characters are people in the game, but they're controlled by the AI, or they're controlled by the program, or they're controlled by the game master, or they're controlled by some rules in a book. Okay, so I think that's a basic idea. And what I want to show you is that inside this class, this role-playing class, this RPG we have for our negotiation. What we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we are a company and we need to make a negotiation. So in this class, I just want to quickly let you know that it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, 
Stay tuned, watch some more videos for more detail. At the very beginning of this class, the most important thing we can have is the class outline. And so for the class outline, we need to get the document, which is linked inside of iLearning or linked from one of my websites. And the first thing we want to look for is how to join a group. So if you look at the link down here on the document, there's a little section that says join a group. Now when you click join a group, it's going to open up a nice little web page. And what you see now is a list of groups. In these groups you can join or you cannot join if they're full. Each group has a maximum of three people. No more than three people in one group. So it would be really good if you know somebody who's taking the class or someone who's a classmate of yours. Or if you're from another department, maybe get some friends and classmates to join with you and you can have three people in a group. You can have less than three people. One is okay, two is okay, but three is the maximum. Four is not okay. So three people maximum. What you do is you find a group that has some space in it, like here, group number six. Six has three empty seats. Seven has two empty seats. That means one person's already inside that group. So you should talk to your friends, talk to other classmates and see is there anyone who would join a group with you. Then when you want to join a group, let's say I want to join group seven, you go ahead and you click that link and you'll get a form to fill out. In this form you use your email and you use your group number. Here I'm joining seven so I don't need to change it. Put in my Chinese name and my English name and my student number. So the student number and the email should match what you used when you signed up for the class on my sign up page inside of Google. So try to keep these the same would be good. Okay, so then when I'm done, I go ahead and submit that and I will be joining a group. Maybe you've never played a RPG or a role-playing game before. I think probably that's impossible because you've played something on a computer sometime, some game, but maybe you're not really familiar. So let's take a look at exactly what an RPG is. Here's a website that sells RPGs. You may be familiar with some famous ones like Dungeons and Dragons, but there are many thousands of games that people have designed and people can play. So here's a website called Drive-Thru RPG. I've been buying games from them for mm, 30, 40 years, basically. Let's take a look at an example of one. Here's a game called Cyberpunk. Maybe you heard about this. This is a very classic older game that's been around a long time. And recently they've made some videos and movies or TV shows on Netflix about this, I think. And I can go ahead and take a preview look at the PDF. So these are the rule books. Very normal. Every role playing game has a rule book. Let's go ahead and look through this rule book. You can see it has a lot of introduction material and then it tells you what the game is about. And then it has some characters in the game. So these are different people that you pretend to be inside the game. And then it will tell you how the rules work. And the rules can be very detailed. Here's what we call a character sheet. The character sheet is literally setting up a pretend character for you. So this is the person you're going to pretend you are inside the game. And very often these characters have different attributes like strength, intelligence, dexterity, different skills that they have. They may be able to do special things, like here you can see, they may be 
able to bribe someone or they may be able to use a cyber technology, something, something like this. Every game is very different. This game is about some kind of future and you have a character and then you have a place and then they have a mission and then they have things they need to do. So that's the way that these games work. The key part of these games is that the things you can do and the things you can't do are based on your character and the situation. And what you always need to do in an RPG is you need to roll some dice. So for example, if we look here, we can see that in this game, you have 1d10, which means you need to have a 10-sided dice. If this said 1d6, that would be a 6-sided dice. If it said 2d10, that would be two 10-sided dice. So you need to roll the dice to calculate the probability of you succeeding or failing at doing something, some kind of task. So inside of our RPG that we're going to play together in negotiation, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to play a role and we're going to use dice, but the dice will be rolled by a computer, not by you. take a look at how we begin to play our RPG. The first step is the easiest step. You just need to log in. I will send you your login information. Each group has their own login. So don't share your information because if you do that, other groups will be able to see your secret information and you don't want that. So the link I send you and the password is what you're going to use. Then you choose your class and you need to be careful. Choose the right class. And then after you choose your class, you need to use a drop-down menu to choose who you are. So if I'm group 22, for example, I would choose from the drop-down menu group number 22, input my password, and then log in. Remember, keep your password secret. It only belongs to you. If other groups get it, they're going to see your secret information. That's not good. Any time when you're playing the RPG, when you're using the software, you can change the language. Just click up top, at the very top, you can see language. So you can have any language you want that's included here, and then the interface will change immediately. Of course, I hope you can try to use English because some of the words are linked to our vocabulary. But if you get confused or you want to maybe understand something better, hopefully you can use the local language and then change back to English. Very easy. begin to play our game and the first step we need to do is create our characters in an RPG. In our game we need to create our company, our group. And the way we do that is we need to roll some dice. But we don't roll dice here, we let the machine do that for us. So the first thing we need to do is log in and then make sure that you're inside the dice roll menu. So the dice roll is right up here. Now, usually when you come in, you will be inside the dice roll page if you did not roll the dice previously. And the way that page looks is something like this. It's very simple, only a few parts. So the first part is the status of the situation. This will include dates and times. Most importantly, this is where you can see, is it time for me to roll the dice yet? So you can see when do the deals end and when do the dice rolls start and end. These are two different things. 
This first one is this dice roll. And the second one is playing the game. So playing the game can last for many days. But rolling the dice usually has a set time. If you miss this time, you're in trouble because you need to make your company or make your character before you can make any deals. And once this deadline passes, it's going to be too late. So you want to really pay attention to the deadline, which is right here, this deadline. So right now I can see that the dice roll ends in 10 hours and 59 minutes. I need to roll the dice before then. Okay, let's give it a try. Down here a little bit further shows us the current product. So this is the product we're going to be playing this time. And we can click there and see a description of the product. So if we click there, we'll see the product information. This is important for us to understand the product, the price, the units, the different attributes of the product. Okay. This tells us some of the basic information we need, such as the base price and the price per unit. But you have to be careful because in business, this is very confusing, right? Different prices have different currency, different units have different size. Sometimes you can buy something that's one unit or a box of 10 units, for example. Then as we come down, we see that this is round number nine. And again, we reinforce the time here. This is the time we have. We must pay attention to this time. Without this, we're gonna be in trouble because this is the time we need to make our dice roll. We can see that so far in this game, we have some buyers and sellers. This tells us the marketplace of buyers and sellers. Remember this class is negotiation, so you're either going to be a buyer or a seller. Your company could be either one. And then down here is the most important part to begin is the button to roll the dice. Now when you roll the dice, it's going to give you a result of how many rolls you have left. We begin with five and the points you can spend. So when you roll the dice, it'll give you some points you can spend. How do you spend those points? You spend those points right over on the left side of the screen. This is where you distribute your points. And you're going to create a character just like inside an RPG game. All right, I think that's an introduction for now. Good luck. When you roll your dice, of course you begin at the bottom of the page here on the APP with the roll dice button. But there's some other things down here at the roll dice button you can see at the very, very bottom called achievement bonus points. What is achievement bonus points? Well, achievement bonus points is like extra for achievement. Sometimes in RPG, people call this XP for experience points. Experience points. Why do you get experience points? Well, it depends on the last game you played, the last round. So if now is round nine, then how did you do in round eight? And here we can see the way the points work. The points very simply are if you're in the top 50% of the class, then you get one point. If you're in the top 75%, then you get another point. And if you're in the top 90%, you get another point. So, this means that if you're in the top 90%, you could actually get one, two, three total extra points. And that's what we see here. For this group, group 22, in their last, their previous RPG, they were in the top 90% of the class. So they get three XP points, 
for three bonus points. That's great. So they push the button to roll the dice and whatever they roll, they also get plus three. So this is a great incentive for you to try to win at your negotiation, to do better than other groups so you can get some nice XP bonus points. Now we're going to roll our dice for beginning the RPG game. And how do we do that? Well, inside the app, on the roll dice page, we go down to the bottom and we can see the button for roll dice. So what we do now is we just push the buttons. Very simple. All right. You ready? I'm going to click it. All right, you get a message that says the information was sent to the server. You click OK. And now we can see we have four dice rolls left. Because the total we can roll the dice is five times. Five times is maximum. You can do more than four, more than three, more than two. But you cannot do more than five. Five is the maximum. You can do one. If you're happy with one, you can do two. Or you can go all the way to five. But once you do five, that's it. You're stuck. Okay, what happened here? Well, after we push the button, we can see that the result is four left. Our bonus is three. And we rolled 27. So we got 27. But because we have a bonus, because we did so good last time, we get plus three. So that's great. So these are the points we can spend. What do we do when we want to spend our points? Well, when we want to spend our points, we need to go over to the right side of the sheet and begin working on spending points. Let me jump over there. And that's here. Resistance, flex, max, delivery, units, importance, and quality. And when we do that, one by one, you can see some information pops out that helps you understand it. I'll review that next. Let's distribute our points a little bit. So after we roll our dice and we're happy with what we got, which in this case was 27 plus 3, we can go ahead and distribute our points. So on the right side, we have our point distribution area. And once we make a change, such as resistance, I'm going to change it to be 2. You can see we get a number up here. This is how many points we have left to distribute. So here we have 23, plus 2, 25, and then 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. How did we get 30? Because remember over here, we rolled 27 plus a bonus of 3, so that's 30. So we have 30 points we can spend any way we want. So as we go ahead and we spend the points here, we can see we get some information that shows us what does it mean. I'm going to go ahead and spend some. And how many do I have left? I still have eight left. So you need to spend all the points before you can begin to play. Of course, we could say, I don't like those points. I want to roll again. Maybe 
I want more than 30. Okay, that's possible. But can you get more than 30? You have to roll again. And you can only roll a maximum of five times. That's the maximum. We've already used one, so we only have four left. So that's a bit risky, because when we roll again, our score could go lower. The points we have to spend would be lower. One of the key points here we can look at is, after we roll the dice, are we a buyer or a seller? And here we're a seller. If we roll the dice again, we could turn out to be seller again, or we could turn out to be a buyer. It's a probability roll on the dice. That's why we say roll the dice. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to spend them. Let's go with resistance. So if we choose one, what we have is the base price. What's the base price? Remember, the base price is summarized based on the product. So here, the base price is 1450, 1450. We also have base units, which in this case is 3800 base units. And we can see that the currency is in USD, US dollars. So because it's US dollars, this is $1,450.00. Okay, so if we choose one for our resistance, then the resistance price is going to be $1,450. Let's go ahead and try something different. Let's choose two. So now the base price is going to be 0.98 of the base price, which means the base price will go lower. If the base price goes lower, that means it may be easier for us to sell if we're sellers. It will also be cheaper for us to buy if we're buyers. So if we're a buyer, this is what our boss told us. We need to buy at this price. If we're sellers, our boss told us we need to sell at this price. So pay attention and remember the lectures from the class and to read the book and to look at the slides because if you don't understand what base price is, how can you play this game? Later, we're going to also talk about things like resistance price, which is related to this base price. So pay attention in the class. There's no easy way to do this if you don't understand how those things work. Let's go ahead and look at flex. What is flex? Well, if I choose four, I get four. If I choose six, I get six. Flex points is flexibility. It's a way to increase your flexibility in your negotiation. Flexibility. Remember we said, when you negotiate, the more flexibility you have, the better. But you don't always have a lot of flexibility and it's not for free. So you need to spend some points here. What about maximum purchase? Maximum purchase is only for a buyer. It's how much you can buy total. You cannot go over it if you're a buyer. But if you're a seller, you don't need this. And in this case, we rolled a seller, so we don't use this. What about delivery? Well, delivery is speed. So if you choose one or two, you can have slow delivery. This means if you're a seller, you can produce and you can only ship slowly. However, if we go up the scale here, we could have average speed of delivery or fast speed of delivery. So you need to choose what do you want. And what about importance? Remember in a negotiation, not every negotiation is important. Some negotiations are more important than others. And if they're more important, you need to change your strategy. So here we choose the importance. So if we choose one or two, small potatoes, so not important. If we choose six, vital importance. Now, what does this do when you play the game, when you play the RPG? Well, the main thing that importance does is it increases your score very quickly. It increases your score if you're doing well. 
But if you're doing bad, if you're doing poorly, it decreases your score very quickly. So you need to watch out and think, do I want this negotiation to be important or not? Because if you do a good job, wow, this high importance could make your score go way up fast. But if you do a not a good job, then it's not going to help. Maybe you want low importance. Because if you have low importance and you don't do a good negotiation, it's okay. The company doesn't lose too much money. And the last one here is quality. So one is going to be low quality and six is going to be high quality. So if you're a buyer, this means you need to buy high quality. If you're a seller, this means you can manufacture high quality. Remember, you need to use up all your points. So we still have seven points here to distribute. So it's up to you. How do you want to use up your points that you rolled? Okay, let me go ahead and just move things around a little bit. We have four points left. Add more to resistance. Add more to units. That's how many we can buy or how many we can sell. Okay, importance, move that up one. We got one more point left. And I'll go over here to five. There you go. Zero points left. Now I'm ready to press play now. Let's go ahead now and prepare to play the RPG. And we do that by distributing our points, which I looked at earlier. But let me remi remind you that you want to really be careful. When you distribute these points, when you spend these points, make sure you talk to your group. So you should have three people together and they should all be thinking, what's the best way that I can distribute these points? What's an idea I have? What's a strategy I have? What's a tactic I have? Because if you just go ahead and spend some points here, 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 you may regret it later and it will make the game very difficult for you to play well. So a key idea of the RPG, remember a role playing game, is that you have to play a character. And in this case, you're a character who's a negotiator and you have a team, a negotiation team. You want to work together. You need to think about what is it that you have as a goal and what's your strategy and what's your tactics. Let me remind you very quickly. Remember we had the four quadrants for the different strategies you can use. And remember we were talking about how important is the negotiation and how important is the relationship, remember? And we have different strategies. So you need to look at that and think about what strategy am I using? What am I going to do? To try to maximize. Not every negotiation you have to win 100%. Sometimes you can compromise and maybe you lose a negotiation. When I say lose, what does lose mean? Lose, well, let me write lose on here. Lose, win, right? What do we mean by this? Well, we're going to have many negotiation rounds. So we're going to have RPG round one. Round zero, round two, one, three. We're going to have many of these. So you have many opportunities. Sometimes it may be helpful that you and another group can cooperate and that maybe you can make a deal and this deal can benefit one side more than the other side. Maybe you roll the dice and your points are just not that great. You don't have a chance to really do well. 
So if that's true, maybe you can use this chance to help another team and in the future they can help you. A key point in our RPG is that you can do anything. Anything you can think of you can try to do. There is no cheating in this game because a role-playing game is free for you to do what you think you need to do. So that's why you need to think. A <laughs> key point. I'm always coming back to this. Think first. It doesn't mean you have to win every time, but your idea, your goal is over the RPG rounds. That yes, you are going to win. So let's look at our situation here, this example. Let's say we rolled our dice over here and then we go ahead and we spend our points. So we need to think, where am I going to spend my points at? Am I going to work on the price? Am I going to focus on the flex points? Am I going to focus on the purchasing amount if I'm a buyer? Am I going to focus on the delivery time? If I have slow delivery and I'm a seller, that's going to make it hard for me to sell. If I have fast delivery, that's going to make it a little bit easier. So let me see. Let's look at the delivery here. I want to have fast delivery. That way, customers will be more likely to make a deal with me. However, now that I have fast delivery, you can see I've spent too many of my points. So that's a little bit of a problem, right? So how do we fix that? Well, we're going to have to adjust. Maybe I take my flex points and move them down to five. Okay. So I want to have a fast delivery. And what about my importance? Let me lower my importance a bit. And then what about my price? Well, since I'm a seller, if I go all the way up here, I can get my price down to 0.91% of the base price. So that's kind of like a sales price. That means that my price is going to be lower than competitors in the market if they do not you know, use this six. If they use five, four, three, two, one, their price will be higher. So as a seller, that will give me a lower price. However, is that always good? Well, if I have a lower price, this is the resistance price. That means the lowest price that you cannot go under. But can you go over? Yes, you can go over. So this is very interesting, right? The base resistance price now becomes a little bit lower, 91% or 9% off, as we say, 9% off. All right, that's good. But what if I sell at the higher price? Then I'm going to make more profit. So you see, it's a little bit complicated. You need to really think with your team members. It's not so simple. If I have a lower price, maybe I can get more customers. But if I have a higher price, I can make more money. But if I have a lower price and then I sell for higher, then this difference will give me more profit and that will be a better deal. Hmm, interesting. All right, so what I'm saying is before you push this button, play now. Before you do that, please talk with your group members. Work together. Remember, each person has a role to play. And that role is part of the role-playing game, RPG. You need to pretend, act like you are a business person. You need to read the book, look at the lectures, and then think of what's your goal, what's your strategy, what's your tactics. Okay, let us go ahead and continue. I'm ready now, and so I'm going to go ahead and push play now. Well, let me see what happens if I do that. Oh, I get a warning. It says, are you sure you want to lock your number? So once you lock your number, once you lock it, you cannot change it. I'm going to say, okay. And it tells me I cannot do that. Why not? Because I am minus three points on my distribution points. I spent too much. So I need to come back down here and maneuver some of these around. So let me go down to four here. 
and maybe on units I'll go down to five so this is my units I'm a seller right now and because I'm a seller this is how many I can sell that's how many my factory can make basically well, let me lower the importance one okay there we go I got zero all right so now I'm gonna try play now again so I push the button and I get a warning do I want to lock my numbers remember once you lock it you cannot undo it okay I say and it tells me that it's updated on the server so now you can see that things have changed a little bit so for example this button here I cannot press now and roll dice I cannot press anymore because everything is locked so when we're locked we can come up top and we can see the negotiation position so now this is fixed not changeable this is the numbers I chose resistance six flex four maximum purchase is zero because I'm a seller not a buyer delivery six units five importance three quality six and I am a seller so that's everything is ready so now I can push this button go to dashboard or I could go up to the menu up top and up top I also have RPG dashboard either way is okay so I'm gonna come down here and say go to the dashboard now we're ready to begin to make deals We'll talk about that more in the next lesson. Now we're going to make some deals so where do we go first we go to the dashboard and the dashboard has many parts so let's look at the first part the very first part is up in the left hand corner and that has a summary very quick summary this tells you what round it is it tells you what product it is and if you click on the product you're going to open up a PDF and the PDF tells you what the product's price and features are which is uh, useful you need to know that so when you talk to the other groups you know what you're talking about we have our group number our class name and the dates the dates are the beginning and ending of the deals after the last date the deals are over you cannot make a deal anymore so you need to pay attention to that time and date because after that no more deals no more deals after that time you've got to do it fast now usually in our class we have a number of days you can do this however I find that lots of students work fast to try to get it done as quickly as possible you need to pay attention to the dates because these dates are the beginning and the end past this if you pass this last date you can make no more deals no deals after that you need to pay attention to that date Before you make a deal you need to see what your situation is and you do that by looking at your quick view so let's come back to our app page and the next section we can see is the quick view the quick view tells us the information that is most important to us maybe you remember this information because you're the one who chose it right when you rolled your dice so we have things like the resistance the flex points and over here we have the number that we chose before so the resistance is telling us the price here that is the resistance price we have the delivery time 
We have the importance and the number of units we can sell or buy. We have the quality and of course we have the role. In this case, we're a seller. So this is the quick view. Look here to very quickly see what is the situation of your company. And you should remember what was your strategy, tactics, what's your goal. You need to remember that yourself because that's not in the app. That's the things you think of with your group members. And again, I remind you, your three group members, remember that you need to get together, make a plan, have a strategy, have some tactics, think of what you're going to do. The next section on our app are the actions. So when you're ready to make a deal, these are the actions you're going to take. The action section has four main actions. The first one is send a deal. That is you send a deal, an offer to another group. We have cancel a deal. That is you don't want the deal anymore. You want to cancel it. We have flex points that you can send. That's a way to give other groups more flex points. Remember, flex points give you flexibility. It helps your score go higher. It helps you to have a good result. So you can give them as a gift. And you can message a group. Messaging a group is a way to contact other groups if you don't know who they are or you don't have another way to contact them. Now this messaging is interesting because when you begin to play the game, you may not know who is in the class because we don't have a classroom. Maybe you can use the messaging a group here to send a message and then once you know them, you can tell them something like your line group or your email or maybe your phone number, etc. You can do anything like that. However, I as the teacher, I as the school, so I'm the teacher, teacher, <laughs> spell my teacher here, that's me here, okay, I cannot, not, no, no, I cannot give away your information to other students. So that's not legal in Taiwan, so I have to be very careful to not do that. So it's a little bit troublesome. It may seem inconvenient, but I don't do that. So you need to do it yourself. Now, of course, be careful and make sure that you're talking to people in the class, right? Don't do something silly. But here is one way that you can help yourself by using this send a message. Because you can send a message to a group, even though you don't know who they are, and you can ask them who they are or maybe ask them to join your group or your line group or your texting group or your social network. And then you can talk to them that way or you can talk to them this way. Either way is okay. You cannot send a message to more than one group. You can only send it to one group at a time. Now, if I come down on the app lower, at the very bottom, you can see Marketplace. In the Marketplace, you can see the group numbers. So if there's a group number here, that group does exist. If the group number is not here, then it doesn't exist. So that's one way you can try to contact some of the groups. You could send a message to every group and tell them what your contact information is. You could create a line group, for example, and have everyone join it. But again, that's up to you any way you want to do it. Maybe you know some students too. However, I would remind you it's a good idea to try to contact different groups, many groups, not just one, because the more groups you contact, the more chance you have to make a good deal. 
if you only contact the same groups all of the time, it's going to be hard for you to really do a good job in the negotiation. You do not have to make all your deals with one group. You do not have to sell all your products to one group. Your group can sell to many groups. You can split your products into many smaller deals. Or you can make one big deal is okay too. Or many small deals. Everything is okay in this game. Everything is possible. Let me see. This is my group here. And then there's many other groups. Just like that. And I can contact them. And then I can make a big deal with one group and maybe a big deal with another group. That's okay. Or I can make many small deals. So just keep that in mind. All right, so that's how you can find a group. Let's go ahead and make a deal. Maybe I talked to a group and I made a negotiation. We had an offer, a counter offer, and finally we agree on terms. So I go ahead and I press this button here. And this is the sale invoice I'm going to send. You need to give some information here and you need to be careful because if you get this wrong, you're going to have to cancel the deal or you're going to have to maybe contact the other group that you sent to by accident. It's very troublesome. And you could lose money this way, just like in a real business. If you make a deal and it was wrong or you did something wrong, the other group may accept your deal may accept your final offer and you have to pay money or lose money or send a product and you lose money and it could hurt you. So just like in the real world, you need to be very careful about this. So the first part is a counterpart. The counterpart is the group you're going to make the deal with. So these groups are just numbers. So it's going to be like group one maybe or group two maybe or group 12 or group 32, something like that. Then you're going to indicate the number of units. So the units could be something like 10 or just one as possible. That's unusual, but maybe 1,000 units. So it's important that you understand what is the product and what is the units that we're dealing with. So you need to always come back and look at your product so you understand it. Otherwise, you're going to make a silly mistake. You're not going to understand things. Of course, the price is probably the easiest thing to understand. So you need to get the price right here. And you should usually include the decimal point. So maybe you're going to sell it at 1,220 point, point, right? In this class, we're going to use the decimal point, point. We're not going to use the comma. No, we don't do that. That's the kind of way in the EU, they often use the comma for the smaller decimal point. We're going to use the decimal point. Okay, then we can choose the quality. And the quality uses a drop-down menu. And we can choose the delivery. Delivery uses a drop-down menu. And then in here, this is a very important part. This is called the deal ID. In business, we often have numbers like this, ID numbers, identification numbers, deal numbers, transaction numbers, some kind of number that will have a connection with your money. So it's super important, super, 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 super important. You cannot forget this. You cannot get this wrong. If you send money to another bank or you send money to another company, you need to have some kind of transaction number or ID. That's what we have here. Inside of here, you need to put an ID. Now, can you make an ID? Like maybe I can say, hmm, I want my ID to be A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. And the answer to that is no, you cannot do that. You must use a special number. Where do we get the special number from? Well, right here. Here's the number. It's made for you. This is the number. So you can see the number right here. Now, what can you do? You can try to copy the number or you can press this link here and it will copy the number for you. Okay. Now, what do I do once I have the ideal ID number, the deal ID?
Not every negotiation has to be the most important negotiation. Not every negotiation do you have to try to win or maximize. Remember, we talked about in our class. Sometimes you need to improve the relationship. Sometimes you need to maybe sacrifice and help another group, help another company, cooperate, and maybe you will lose money, but it will lose a little bit of money, and then later you can make more money. One way to do this is to send flex points. And so, if you push the button "Send Flex Points," you can see here you can send to a group, and then how many points, and you can include a message. This is just like giving resources or giving money to another group. Now, of course, it's not really money, but it's very close to money, so some kind of resource. Why would you do this? Maybe you have extra. Maybe you're not going to play to win. Maybe you're playing to maybe not lose too badly, but you know you're going to lose your negotiation this time. But you can help another group. Well, if that's true, then maybe that will help your relationship in the future. Maybe you have a group you often cooperate with. Is cooperation okay in this game? Yes, cooperation is okay. You can work together. You can form alliances. You can. Tell a group you're their friend, and then later you can not be their friend. So you can basically tell a lie. That's pretty normal in business. Or you can try to tell the truth, and then other other companies will maybe trust you. Or maybe you don't want trust. Or maybe you want to trick them somehow. Well, that's okay too. In this game, like I said, there is no way to cheat. There is no cheating in this game. There is none. You can do anything you want, just like the real business world. Of course, you cannot break the law. Like in this game, if you make a deal, you have to finish the deal. You cannot make a deal and then not pay. That doesn't work. But you can make alliances. You can work together. And one way to do that is maybe to send some flex points, or you could ask a group. If you want to finalize a deal, maybe they should send you some extra flex points as part of the deal. Just a very quick reminder: What do flex points do? Flex points will help increase your score. Remember, and it will help you to get a higher score. The last action we're going to look at is the cancel action. The cancel a deal is very straightforward. You just press the button to cancel, and then you need to input the counterpart, that is the other group that you made a deal with. For example, maybe group number three. So I sent a deal to three, but I want to cancel now. And then here you need to input the deal ID. It must be the exact. Same as the number you sent, which is often a very long number. So be careful; it must be exactly the same. Then you go ahead and you click cancel deal. And when you cancel the deal, that should be it. There may be a cost associated with canceling it. So there may be a cost, and this will be maybe. And we'll talk about that at another time. So that's it for the action area. You can see in review very quickly: send a deal, cancel a deal, gift flex points, or message a group.
after you send a deal, the other side will have to take some kind of action. So let's take a look. How do we know about a deal that we sent? If we scroll down, we can see two sections on our app. These two sections include deals waiting and deals waiting. Okay, very good. What are these deals waiting for? Well, the one here on the left is counterpart, and then after that is you. So if we look here, we can see that I have sent a deal, and this is the deal ID right here. Let's take a closer look at this first one. Let's say that I sent a deal, and I'm waiting for the other group to respond. I sent the deal to group 22 right here. Group 22 has not responded yet, so I'm waiting. What happens when they respond? This will disappear and it will become a completed deal. But until then, I need to wait for them. So let's quickly review what's here. Counterpart is the other team, the other group. I sent it to them. What was their number? That's group 22, I'm waiting. What was the deal ID? Right here, this long number. This is very important to remember because this is the number you need to tell the other group so that they know it's from you. Otherwise, they might be confused. Or maybe you need to cancel your deal. If you need to cancel it, you need to remember this number. And then over on the right side is a few details. So how many units is the offer? What's the price of the offer? What's the quality level and the delivery speed of the offer? So this is very helpful for us to quickly see the deals that we've sent and now we are waiting for them to respond. Maybe we need to encourage them. Maybe we need to send them a text message. Maybe we need to send them an email. Maybe we need to call them or talk to them face to face. But we don't want this just to wait here because it's a deal that's not finished. If someone sends us a deal and we're waiting to respond, here we have a section called deals waiting for you. That is my group. My group is needs to do something. We need to take action. So let me make a note here. Need action. Something needs to be done here. Now, right now, there's nothing to act because we're not, uh, we're empty. We have no deals here waiting for us. Let's look at an example that does have one waiting for us. We're going to go down to the waiting section and here we can see waiting for you which is my group and we have two deals waiting for us. These two deals we can see have their own deal number. They're different. These numbers are not the same. They should never be the same. We can see the group that they're from, for example, 31. So 31 has sent us a deal, an offer, and this is the number of units, and this is the price, this is the quality, and this is the delivery speed. So we can see that we have to do something. Now, could we do nothing? It's possible we could do nothing, but that would mean we lose a deal opportunity. If the deal is very good, we don't want to lose the chance. If the deal is not good, then we can contact the other side and tell them we don't want to complete the deal. We don't agree to the deal. And then they may cancel the deal. 
Now, when they cancel the deal, there may be a penalty for canceling a deal. We have to wait and see. I'm going to show you that later. Let's go ahead and finish making a deal right here. So what do we do when we're going to complete a deal? Well, we have a deal waiting. So what we can do is we can go ahead and touch that, click it, press it, activate it, and it will automatically jump up to the top of the app and it will create a sales invoice for us. And you can see this sale invoice already includes all the important information. So, for example, we already have the information of the deal ID. That is the most important. We also have the information of the price. That's very important, of course. And we have our counterpart. Group 31 sent this to us. How many units? Our delivery and quality is also here. So for example, here we have this 1348 is the price and it's from group 31. So if we go ahead down the app here back, we can see the exact same information here. We have group 31. Right here, we have the deal ID here, and the price was 1348. So everything we have is the same, it's just automatically sent up to the top. So let me go ahead and click that again. There we go, comes right up there and opens it. So this is just the same as sending a deal. It's the exact same thing, only now we're responding to the other group, to our counterpart. And the key here is this ID is the same. So every deal will have one ID. One ID for one deal. One deal. You should never repeat an ID. The IDs are always unique. They never repeat. They're never the same. But one ID remember is two groups. Right? Because they're going to make one deal. So this deal, this needs to have an ID. So this group will use it and this group will use it and it's the same deal, one deal. So that's the important thing to not forget. And then when we're finished, we can just go ahead and press the button, send a deal, and the deal will go into the database. After a group sends a deal and the counterpart, the other group, accept the deal, you will have a deal completed. When you first begin the game, of course, you have no deals completed. And don't forget, every time we play an RPG, we begin all over again. So as we can see here in this section, deals completed, we have an empty area. There's nothing here because we don't have any deals yet. So empty, right? Now, if the deal is waiting for you, so we can see over here, maybe some deals are waiting. That would be down in this section down here, waiting. They do not count as completed. That's the waiting area. You need to go ahead and agree to a deal. You need to respond, and then it will be completed. Here's an example of some deals that are completed for this group. When a deal is completed, it cannot be changed. It's over, final. So that's a key point to remember. Your deals are always final. Now we do have a special case where we can cancel a deal, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the key point here is once they're sent in, you cannot click here and change them. 
If you send another deal, then that deal will be a new deal. You cannot use the deal IDs again. That's a key point. You can only use these one time. If you repeat, if you try to change the deal by using the same ID, then you will have a problem. That will be an error. And that will not work. You may lose some points or you may lose the game if you do that kind of mistake. So pay attention and don't do that. Okay, so here we have the basic information, which is as always the deal ID. What group is this deal with? So this is my group and group 22, and this is my group and group 69, and my group and group 17. Let's look now at how to cancel a deal. Remember when we want to cancel a deal, we go ahead and we can use the cancel a deal button. And remember when we use the cancel a deal button, we need to include the very important information like the counterpart, the other group, and the deal ID. And remember the deal ID must match exactly what the deal number was. That's very, very important. Okay, when we cancel a deal, we can come down here and look at the Cancel Deal section. Let's go ahead and look at the easy situation. That is, deals are canceled by both sides. So that means when you cancel a deal, if both sides do it, there's going to be no problem. This is the easiest situation. So in this situation, we're going to have a deal ID like this one here. And remember, this deal ID was shared by both groups. So maybe you had a group like group 13, and you had another group like group 10, and they already made a deal with this number. This long number was this deal. So they used it and they used it. Both groups used that deal ID. So one deal ID for one deal. Okay, so they went ahead and did that, but now they want to cancel. So what can they do? Both groups can cancel. So group 13, and group 10. They both need to press that button, cancel the deal, and they need to put the deal number in there and the other team, the other group's number. And if they do that, if they do everything correctly, which is pretty easy, then what will happen? You will get this cancel come through. So that's one cancel. Here's another cancel. So those are two different deals canceled. And we can see when we look at this that it's between group 10 and 13 and here 13 and 10. So even though they look like it's the same deal, it's not because you can see the deal number is different. Okay, so those are two separate deals. Those are not one deal. Okay, so that works out perfectly. When you do that, everything's okay. Very good, very good. Two deals canceled. However, if you don't do it that way, there may be a little bit of a problem or a fee. We're going to look at that next.
All right, we're looking at canceling a deal, which is kind of a special case, but it does happen. Remember, when we cancel a deal, it's very simple. You press the button and you need to put in the group number that you're making a deal with, the other group, not your group, the other group, the counterpart, and the deal ID. You have to get the ID correct. And when you do that, usually it's no problem because both sides will cancel, right? So if both sides cancel, everything is good. And we're going to just go ahead and both are good. Check, that's canceled, check, that's canceled. Everything's very smooth. But now we're gonna look at the special case where it's not both sides cancel. So let's look at another example here. And we come down to our cancel deal area. And remember down here is canceled by both. That's no problem. But up here is canceled with penalty. So what does canceled with penalty means? It means you've got to pay a price. There's going to be a cost. So if there's going to be a cost, what is that cost? Well, if you scroll down, 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 down here, you can see the cost is explained. So let me go over the cost with you. It's, it's pretty easy to understand, but you need to take it step by step. When we look at the possible cost, the first case is the easy case, and that is both groups cancel. If both groups cancel, there's going to be no cost. You pay no cost, the other group pays no cost, the deal is just gone, canceled, everything is good. The second case is case B. You cancel, but the other party, the counterparty, does not cancel. Not cancel. So that means that you cancel, but the other side does not agree to cancel. So if we look at that kind of situation, it's something like this. We have a group, like maybe your group is group 22. And here's another group, maybe this is group 30. And you go ahead and you send a deal, and they send a deal, so the deal is agreed to. So this deal is good. So this deal that has a number, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe that's its number, the deal ID. Of course, that's not a real one, that's a fake one, so don't use that. Okay, so they agree. Well, what happens next is maybe someone is not very happy with this. So the other side, they say, hey, it's okay, I accept it. But this side over here, they say, no, I don't want it anymore. So my group says no. Okay, so what can we do? Well, we can send the cancel, and that will be this kind of case where you cancel but the other side does not cancel. Okay, in the real business world, this often does happen. One side drops out of a deal, and what do we end up with? Well, we end up with the deal is kind of over anyway because one side refuses to continue the deal. So we end up with a situation where one side got what they want and one side is not getting what they want. So in that kind of case, what we have is a group here and a group here. And at the beginning, everybody's happy. But then at the end, this side, they cancel the deal and they're happy because they didn't like the deal. And then the other side, they're not happy because they did like the deal and they do not want to cancel. They do not want to cancel. They like the deal. Why did this happen? Well, there's many reasons why it could happen. It could happen that one side made a deal and they were not careful. Maybe they made the price too low. Maybe they made the quality too high. Who knows? They did something wrong. Maybe they pressed the button wrong and they made the price just ridiculous, too low by accident. That happens. There's many things that they did wrong, but they're not happy with it, so they want to cancel. Okay, well, in the real world, 
they can go ahead and just not pay or not ship the product or not do something. But the other side who's not happy, what can they do? Well, you can't force the other team to make the deal. You can't force the company to send you the product, but you can go to court and you could sue somebody over this. You could use the law to make them pay. Well, we all know what happens when you use the law. It takes a very long time and it costs a lot of money to use the law. So in this game, the way we do this is we simulate that you can cancel a deal and the other side does not agree. And they could sue you, but that would take a long time. So we're going to make it a little bit more simple and just have a fee associated. Now let's pay attention to what the fee is. So if you cancel and the other side does not cancel, so the cost here would be 0.5 flex points. That means half a flex point for every 100 units. So if you have 200 units in the deal and it gets canceled, then you're going to end up paying one flex point. One flex point. So the fee is not huge, but it's also not small, especially when you start making big deals. So if we had, let's say, 600, 600, so 600 would be three flex points. And we round down. So if this was, for example, 700, then it's still going to be three. But when it gets to be 800, it's going to jump up to four. So it's going to cost somebody who canceled and the other side did not cancel. It's going to cost something, but it's not huge. It's also not small because remember, your flex points make your score go up or make your score go down. When you have more, you go up. When you have less, you go down because it gives you flexibility in your negotiation. So very important. So what we have here is a penalty. This is case B. Case A, reminder, no problem. Both sides agree. Case B, you cancel, the other side does not cancel. What about case C? All right, in case C, we have this special case where you do not cancel, but the counterparty cancels. Okay, so this is reversing the situation. What happens in this situation? Well, in this situation, you want to continue the deal. The other side changes their mind for whatever reason. What's the result? The result is that you pay nothing and you gain nothing. The deal is just lost, a lost deal, a lost deal. And this seems very unfair, doesn't it? This seems like that's not the way it should be because I had a group, a company and another company and we had a happy deal. And then what happened? This company said, nah, never mind, goodbye. And then this company, your company, is now stuck. What do you do? Remember, I said you need to go to court. You need to use the law. You need to get lawyers, right? Nobody wants this. A lot of trouble, but that's what you have to do. Okay, so what happens then? Do you make money? Well, no. You probably get something, but you spend something. So it ends up that it's approximately equal to zero when you lose a deal like that. That's usually what happens in the real world. It's really impossible that you're going to make money because another company did something wrong or did something bad. It's, I guess maybe in the news we can find some example, but I don't see any. So what's the key idea here? The key idea here is this. If you're gonna make a deal with a group and you're thinking, can I trust them? Do I have trust? And it's a question mark. Do I trust them? Because when you make a deal, they could cancel on you. They could do something that you don't expect. Then what are you gonna do? Well, you could go ahead and you could think about this and talk to other groups, other companies. 
you can look at the marketplace, look at the information inside of our game, inside of our RPG. And you can go there and try to check and see, hey, you know what? Does this group say that that group is good? What do they say about them? What do they say about them? Just like in the real world, you have to learn if you're going to trust a group or not, if you're going to trust a company or not. And if they say no, they did not keep their deal. They did not keep their deal. They, got, they did not keep their deal. This group number 22, that's a bad group. Or this group number 31 is a bad group. So in that case, maybe you would avoid making a deal with a group that makes bad deals. So they're all happy, but maybe you should make sure that they're not so happy because they have a bad reputation, right? What's their history? And because we play many rounds in the RPG many times, you can use this to see if you trust a group to make a deal with you or not. Okay, what's another thing to pay attention to? Well, here's a really good one. We call it too, T-O-O, too good to be true. Too good to be true. Too good to be true. What does that mean? Too good to be true means don't do it, right? Don't take a deal that is too good to be true. Too good to be true. Why would a deal be too good to be true? Probably the other side is making a mistake. Probably they don't understand something. They type something wrong. Maybe they're not paying attention. They're not really looking at the app and how it works. Okay, so that is case B. So we have case A, both parties. That's easy. That's the best. We have case B. You cancel, but the other side does not cancel. There will be a fee. What about case C? You did everything correctly, so you're okay. But the other side, they canceled. You get nothing and you lose the deal. So this could hurt you, right? Case C. Case C can hurt you because you have a deal that falls through. So what can you do before the end of the game, every week before the end? Maybe you need to check, make sure that everything is the way you think it should be. You need to double check, double check before the end of the week, before the end of the game. Make sure that the group you made deals with or the many groups you made deals with, none of them canceled on you because if they canceled, your score will go down. Why? Because you made a deal and now there's no deal. So you're losing a good deal. Why did they cancel? They probably canceled because something was wrong and they were going to lose money and you were going to make money. So that's another thing I guess I should say, right? Pay attention, right? Too good to be true. Too good to be true. Watch out, right? And... How can I say this? Maybe if you get a too good, too good to be true deal, if you get it and if you take it, maybe you should be sure and double check <laughs> before the end of the game. Make sure the other side did not cancel on you because if they cancel you're going to lose that really good deal that you thought was so good that was making your score go up and now they cancel they pay a fee but you lose nothing but your score goes down all right so that's uh, seems a little bit complicated right it's not too bad though so let's come back and look at this readout so here we have canceled by both that's very simple and here we have invalid deals. These are deals that don't work. And here we have invalid cancels. These are cancels that are wrong. Something is wrong with them. We're going to look at these a little bit later. And lastly, we have this one here, canceled with penalty. And here we can clearly see what the situation is. So here's the deal number. And then here are the groups. And here's the group that canceled. So 69 canceled. 
it was 450 units. And so we're going to have a penalty of two flex points. Here we have group 45 and we have 100 units and it's going to be one flex point. The last part of the cancel section we're going to look at is the little bit unusual case where someone's not careful. So of course we have the canceled with penalty here and we have canceled by both which is okay, no problem. But here we have this unusual case which is invalid deals. So what does invalid deals mean? Invalid deals means that the deal number has been used incorrectly. Something's wrong with the deal number. So let's look at an example here in this group's case where we have repeated deal IDs. So that's usually the problem. Let me just review very quickly. Remember what we need to do. Let me draw a picture here to make it very clear. You have a group, you have another group, and they make a deal ID. So one deal ID is for this group and this group. So they're basically sending two deals. Send a deal this way, send a deal this way. But they have to use the same ID. Just like a bank transfer or a bank number or a case number. Be very, very careful. And many people, many companies have lost millions and millions of dollars by using the wrong number or repeating a number or just typing it wrong on the computer keyboard. So in our game, we pay attention to this. It's very important. What happens if you make this mistake? Well, if you make this mistake, we can see that it falls into this invalid deal area. And what is an invalid deal? Usually it's that the deal ID has been used more than once. So here we can see this number 131 and 131 is the same number. And you can see that it's been sent from this group 10 to 69 and also from 69 to 10. So what does that tell us? That tells us that in fact these are the same groups, right? They did the right thing, but they did the right thing twice. So, or maybe three times, because maybe this deal did work one time. But they're repeating it, so they're sending it more than once. You cannot send a deal more than once. Only the first time counts. What happens if you send it and you don't want it anymore? You need to cancel it, right? So, this is an example of too many times using the same number. And here we have the same example again, 77, 77, 77. Okay, is there any punishment for this? What happens if you do an invalid deal? Well, there's no real punishment for this. It just means that the deal doesn't happen. It also does not change any previous deals. Once a deal is made, you can only cancel it. You cannot change it. So you can never change it. You can only cancel it. You can only cancel, not change. Okay, so that's an invalid deal. There's no real punishment, but you need to be careful not to waste your time or get confused. The last section in this area is called invalid cancels. And what's an invalid cancel? An invalid cancel is similar. It means you sent a cancel but you repeated the number, the deal ID, and so you're sending it to a deal that already was canceled or didn't even exist maybe. So let's look at this example here. So we have a few cancels. If we look at this first number here, 750, we can see that it's sent by 
group 69, and the counterpart is 10. Okay, so 750 is the key here. And if we come up, we also see that 750 actually was canceled, right? 750. So this cancel was already canceled. This deal was already canceled. But what happened? The teams or one of the teams, one of the groups or both of the groups sent it again. And there it becomes an invalid cancel. It's repeating. Okay, so these are the groups and these are the numbers. And I think you can remember all of those bits there. Okay, so that's a review of this section. It's pretty simple, but it might confuse you at first. Canceled deals. Canceled with penalty. Canceled by both, and that is perfectly fine. That is for free. No fee at all. That's for free. Invalid deals. Usually this means that you repeat the deal ID. You used it again, which is not correct. You need to be careful. Don't use it again. Invalid cancels. Invalid cancels means that you use the deal ID again, maybe twice, maybe three times. You cannot do that. You can only use it once. Okay. And then down here are the very clear rules that you can try to follow. Pay attention to these rules down at the bottom and you can see what you have to pay. All right, good luck with your canceling. Now we're going to look at the flex points and how you can gain or lose flex points. So in your app, we have this flex point section and this summarizes your flex points. Now of course, remember when you begin before the RPG starts, you do have some flex points. Usually you chose how many when you spent your points, when you rolled your dice. So for example, in this case, we have one flex point. So that means before this group began, they spent their dice roll points and they distributed them to these different things such as resistance, such as quality, such as delivery speed. And for flex, they chose one. Okay, that's all right. There's no rule about how many it should be or how many it shouldn't be when you begin. However, the goal is, of course, to try to get flex points up because it will influence your final grade or your final score in the RPG. Okay, let's go ahead and look at how we can make more or lose flex points. The easiest way to make flex points or to lose flex points actually is to have a gap, a gap between your quality and your delivery. Now, what does a gap mean? Well, we need to look back at how we began the RPG. Remember, we have our resistance, we have our quality, we have our delivery. So in this case, for flex points, we are just going to focus on the two attributes of delivery and quality. Now the price we're going to talk about later, that's a separate situation. But for now, for the flex points, the way you're going to gain or lose is based on delivery and quality. Now remember, we have three delivery speeds, which are slow, medium, fast. And we have three quality levels, which is low, medium, and high. 
Now the thing we need to remember here, be very careful, is are you a buyer or are you a seller? Because buyers and sellers are going to be different. In fact, they're going to be opposite. 180 degrees the other way. Let me remind you quickly, what's the difference between the buyer and the seller when it comes to these two attributes of delivery quality, delivery speed, and delivery quality? If you're a buyer, what would you like for the price? Of course, you would like the price to be lower. If you're a buyer, what would you like for the delivery speed? Of course, you would like faster delivery speed. Okay. So this is the key to remember. That's opposite of the seller, right? A seller would want to have a higher price and a slower delivery speed so they can save money. That's very basic. Buyers and sellers are going to be opposite. Now, in this RPG, it is not the case that when a buyer makes some profit, the seller loses money. No, that's not true. It can be true. It might be true. Usually it's true related to the price but it's not true related to quality and delivery. That's not true. So how do we judge quality and delivery? Well, the most important thing we can do is right here. You need to look at what your group's key attribute value is. So if your attribute value for quality is, for example, low, that means if you're a buyer and you buy anything better than low, maybe medium quality, maybe high quality, then that is a win. And that is a win. You're winning. You're getting something more than what you had to get. Okay, so let me repeat. If I'm the buyer and my quality attribute here is low, that means that my company has told me I have to get at least low. But if I can get medium, that's better. And if I can get high, that's even better. That's what my company told me. That's what this number here means. What about delivery? Well, here we can see the delivery is slow. Because I'm the buyer, if I can get a faster delivery, that would be good for me. Especially if I can get it and I don't pay more. So the company has told me that I need to get at least slow. But if I can get medium or if I can get fast, then both of those I'm going to be winning something. I'm going to be going beyond my company's requirement, which is good. Let's jump over and take a look at a seller's case. So let's look at a seller here. Okay, so let me do the same thing. Only now, let's think about the seller. So here we have a seller. And we're going to look at the quality. So the seller for this quality is three high. So I'm selling the product, I'm selling it, and I can make high, but it would be better for me to save money and make it medium 
or to make it low quality because low quality would be cheaper for me to make. And so if I can make medium quality or low quality, then I'm going to win something. I'm doing better than what I'm required to do. I'm required to do the minimum, right? But I can try to get something else. So in the seller's case, that minimum maximum is kind of opposite of the buyer's case. All right, confused? Well, let me try again here with the delivery speed. At my company, we have average delivery speed. That means that's what we can do. If we can deliver at slow delivery speed, we save money. So this is good. But if we have to deliver at high delivery speed, that's going to cost us money. That's not good. If we can deliver at average delivery speed, well, that's okay. That's what we can do. That's our normal. But we save money by going slow and we spend money by going high because my company is set here at average. Does that make sense? Think about it a little bit and be careful when you play the RPG because people often get this confused, especially the difference between the buyer and the seller. All right, so how does this affect your points? Well, the first and most important effect is on your flex points. So your flex points, you gain points or you lose points by doing what I just said. So if you are, in this case, we are a buyer. So if I'm a buyer and I can buy at a better quality and at a faster speed, that's good for me. But what do we mean when we say better or faster? What do we mean? We mean this number right up here. These are the numbers that matter. So if my quality is low and if I can get medium, I'm going to gain a flex point. If I can get high, I can gain two flex points. The same is true for my delivery speed. Because my company requires me to have at least slow. But if I can get medium, I can gain one point. If I can get fast, I can gain two points. Quality is the same. If I can get medium, I can gain a point. If I can get high, I'll gain two points. So when you make a deal, the deals show up down here. So each deal has a deal ID. And we can see the ID here. How many units? 200. And this gap, this gap is the gap between my company's requirement and what the deal resulted in. So here, the gap is one. Why is it one? because this deal must be giving me the medium quality because my requirement is low quality. But I, if I get higher, that's better. Better for me. And what about delivery? I'm gaining one. Why? Because my delivery speed requirement was slow, but I was able to get medium. And then here you can see the total points you get are four. Why four? Because it's per 100 units. So this is 200 units. So everything here will be times two. So we get four extra points. So in this way, we gain flex points. Why do we want to gain flex points? We want to gain flex points because as these points get bigger, it's going to increase our score very quickly. 
Okay, let's take a look on our app here, and you can see this instruction. So you can see going higher gains flex points, one point per 100 units. Going lower spends flex points, one point per 100 units. And remember, you can cancel a deal, but the deal, if you cancel, may cost something depending on the situation, right? A little bit complicated. Okay, let's look at the seller's case here. So we have the seller. And here we had the seller was quality uh, high. And we have the delivery speed average. We come down to the flex point area. And we can see here, we have a deal number. And we have some units. And we have zero, zero. What does that mean? That means that the deal we made matched exactly what our requirements were, our minimum requirements. So we didn't gain anything. And here we didn't gain anything. Over here, we gained something because here the quality gap. So we were able to sell the product for one level lower quality than our attribute number. And so we gain one and it's per 100. So we get 2.25 flex points. So let me, oops, let me come up here again. Seller, right? So if you're the seller, it would be very good if you could have high quality here. Why? Because then you can try to sell for medium or you can try to sell for low and you will gain flex points. It would also be good if you were the seller that your delivery speed is high. Why do you want it to be high? Because if you can sell for medium, you'll gain a point. And if you can sell for slow delivery, you'll gain two points. So this is very important to remember when you roll the dice, because when you roll the dice, that's when you set up, you decide these points and buyer and seller are totally opposite. So please remember, check it out carefully. Are you a seller or are you a buyer? Okay, so that's the easy way to gain or lose flex points. We can look at many examples here. Here's many deals for this group. And this group has a total of, they've gained 91 flex points. Now there's other ways to gain flex points, but this is the most easy, clear way. And you can see here that they're often gaining one point, one, one, one on the delivery gap. And they're often gaining one on the quality gap, sometimes two. So how can they do that? That's because they are a seller. And you can see that what they've done is they've chosen to have fast delivery. They spent the points and high quality. So that allows them to go down and then make points and then go down and make points. But if you're a seller, if you're a seller, and you can only produce low quality, that's the only thing you can do. It's going to be hard for you to find buyers because the buyers may require higher quality. And if you produce higher quality, it's gonna cost you more money. It's gonna be harder. So you're gonna lose flex points. So you can see groups often try not to lose flex points. They try to gain flex points, as in this example here. Lots of flex points being gained. Okay, next we're going to look at another way to gain some points.
The next way you can gain some flex points is by just making deals, which sounds unusual, right? But this is an easy way to gain some flex points. So let's take a look at this example here. You can see that in this case, this group did already get some flex points because they had a quality gap and a delivery gap. Remember this gap, what is this gap? Is this the buyer seller gap? Like the, the buyer and the seller and they make a deal and there's a gap here. Is that what it is? No, that's not what it is. It's not a gap. When you win some points, the other side does not always lose points. And when they win points, you don't always lose points. This gap is not between you and the other group. This gap is between you and you. This gap is between your deal and your goal or your ability, right? If your company can make high quality, that's great, but they save money by lowering quality a little bit. If they can, if they can deliver fast, but they can make a deal to deliver slow, then they make some extra profit. That's what this is. This gap is the gap between your deal and your situation, your attribute, your company's ability or capability. Okay, so that's one way, easy way to get some flex points. That's the normal way. But what's another way? Look down here at this section called bonus. Here, this group has plus three bonus. How did they get plus three bonus? Well, if you look down here at the bottom, there's a little instruction. And it says that you can earn extra flex points by making more deals with different groups. What does different groups mean? Different group numbers. So if you make a deal with group 22, then you make a deal with group 18, then you make another deal with group 22, that's okay. That's okay, nothing wrong with that. But what does that mean? That means that this group and this group counts as one relationship, and this one is another relationship. So this would be one relationship, and this would be a second relationship. And we give you extra flex points for every relationship you create. So it's very helpful to make deals with more than one group. However, there is a little bit of a limitation or a rule you must follow. And the rule is that you must make a deal that's at least 10% of your target units, 10%. In other words, you cannot make a tiny, tiny deal. You cannot just sell one unit. That's gonna be not enough to count for a relationship. So to count, you need to make it more than 10% of the target. Let's take a look at this example here. So here are the units that we need to target selling is 1,000. So 10% of 1,000 is 100. So if you make a deal that is equal to or larger than 100, then that counts as a separate relationship if it's a different group. If it's less than, if it's 99, then no, that won't count. Okay, let's look at this example here. So this group made three deals. One, two, three. And they are different deal numbers. Of course, they have to be different deal numbers. And they made the deals with different groups. And you can see here that they're going to get three extra points. Now, how do they get three extra points? Because it's one, two, three, and all of them are bigger than or equal to 100, which was the target. So that's called the bonus. 
And when you add up all your flex points, you end up with a number, something like here, 15, for example. Your number could be bigger or smaller. And of course, you would like this flex points to keep going up more and more. That would be better and better. Let's look at another example. In this example, the target is 1,030, which means 10% is 103. So if we come down to their flex points, we have some deals here. And we can see here that the bonus is plus four. How many deals did they make? One, two, three, four, five. So why don't they have five? Well, because of this deal right here, which is less than the 100 that we needed to make the deal. Well, in this case, it wasn't a 100, was it? It was 103, right? 103. Okay, so you have to be at least 103. They weren't even close. This was only 70. So this one will not count for extra. Now, you can still make points here in the gap, right? So if, if they had a quality gap, this would be okay. And if they had a quality gap, this would be okay, but they didn't. So that's separate. So there's two ways to make your points, right? Don't forget two ways, not one way, right? The two ways is here is one way. And then your bonus is another way. And the bonus is based on different groups and over your target number. Now, if you repeat the same group, that won't count. It will only count for totally different groups. Okay, next we're going to look at a special case that only happens if you're selling products. Another way you can gain some flex points is the special case if you're a seller. A seller meaning you're selling the product. Let's go ahead and look at first though, the buyer. So here's a buyer. And we can see he's a buyer right here. Now this buyer has a maximum purchase amount. So their maximum purchase is 1,100. And you can see here, very important, do not buy more than this. If you are a buyer, you cannot, no, not go over this maximum purchase. It is super important. Very, very important. This maximum purchase means that a buyer has an inventory, maybe like a warehouse, and you cannot put more products into the warehouse. So think of a, um, let me get my line here. Think of a warehouse like this. It's got big doors up front. And you can put your products in there, put your products in there, you pile them up, you pile them up, you pile them up and the warehouse gets full. If you have more products, you cannot put them in. They won't go in anymore. It would cost more and more money for you to have the inventory and it becomes impossible very quickly. So, the special case for the buyer, very special, you must remember it, is that you cannot go over this maximum. Never ever. If you do, game over, you lose. However, in the case of the seller, things are different. In the case of the seller, 
like this case here, we have a seller. In the case of a seller, we have our maximum sales. Now the maximum sales, in this case, 1,030. Can we go over it? Well, for the seller, you can, yes. You can go over. Why is that? Well, because the seller is different than the buyer. The seller has like a factory, like a long assembly line, right? And they make the product on their assembly line inside their factory, right? And as they make the product, it comes off and they can ship it off. Well, the factory usually runs maybe 10 hours a day or eight hours a day, but you can increase that. You could run for 15 hours a day, or you could run for 20 hours a day, or you could run for 24 hours a day, and you would produce more. Maybe you run for three days a week, and now you can run for four days a week, or even seven days a week. And if you do that, you would produce more and more. So, the seller can go over the maximum sales. Yes. But, it's not for free. Because you have to run the factory more. So it's going to cost you money. How, what will it cost? How will you spend this? Flex points. You need to spend flex points. So let's look at this example here. So here's a seller. We come down to the flex point section and we can see that this seller has received some bonus for, why? Because they had one, two, three, four deals with different groups. That was a bonus, good for them. That's very good. But they also have overproduction. So how did they get overproduction? Because the total number of units is beyond their maximum. Now, how does this fee work? Well, it's written down here at the bottom. Right down here. If you produce over your maximum, you have to spend one point of flex for every 10% over your maximum every 10%, one flex point. So it's not cheap. It's a little bit expensive because you're gonna use up a flex point. So how do you decide to do this? Well, or why would you do it? Why would you do this when you're gonna have 10% over? Why would somebody do that? Well, let's look at an example here. I think I have a good example. Here we go. This is a group and this group is a seller. And you can see they made a lot of deals. Why did they make a lot of deals? Because they must have found other groups that would buy their products for a lower price, for a slower delivery, for a lower quality. So they could make more and more flex points. And they kept producing and they produced so much that you can see they actually end up spending 52 flex points in overproduction. 52. But even though they spend 52, their total flex points they're getting is 91.5. How did they get so many flex points? Well, they get the flex points from their quality gap and their delivery gap. Look at all of those. Look at all of those. So in the role-playing game, in the RPG, you need to consider. You can spend money to produce more, but can you make more money than it costs to produce more? And that's the question here. You need to think about it very carefully. How many groups can you find and how much of a gap can you make flex points on and then how much will it cost? because it's not cheap. One flex point for every 10% over. So if we look here, for this group, 
their maximum sales was 1,000, which means that for every 100 more, they're going to spend a flex point. And you can see from their deals, they made many deals over 100. But remember, you get an extra flex point just for making a deal that's more than 10% that's with a different group. So right away you get one, but it's got to be a different group. And then you need to see if you can get a gap. So you can see this team really worked hard. What did they do? Contacting many different groups, making many different deals, trying to make sure that they can get some gap to make up for the price for the cost of overproduction. Okay, so just very quickly to review, this special case is only true for the seller, not the buyer. Not the buyer. The buyer cannot do this. Only the seller can do this. The buyer cannot ever go over your maximum purchase. Cannot. The seller can go over, but they have to spend points on it. The next key part to judge if you're doing well, if you're winning your negotiation or you're losing your negotiation is the price. Now the price is what we often focus on the most in a negotiation. As we just looked at for flex points, it's not the only thing. It could be your goals. What's your speed of delivery? What's your quality? What's your production capacity? But of course, price is still important. And just like we were talking about with the flex points, price is different for the buyer and for the seller. Now we don't need to go over every detail, but just remember, if you're the buyer, you're going to have a resistance price. That means that you need to buy at that price or under. And if you're a seller, you're going to have a resistance price and you need to sell at that price or higher, right? <laughs> Please, let's remember this basic idea. It's in our course repeated over and over again. The resistance, right? Buyer and seller are in opposite directions. All right, so let's look at this example here. We have a buyer and their resistance is 1500 37. That's the resistance. So they're going to buy at this price or lower. They would like to buy lower, of course. Okay, so after they make some deals, what we can do is we can look at the prices of those deals. So we come down in our app to this section here called the weighted average price. So the weighted average price is the summary of the deals, all the deals you made. In this case, this group made three deals and they add up the prices and the number of units and you end up with your weighted average price. In this case, 1,362. Is that good? Is that a, is that a good price? Well, Remember, up here, their resistance was 1,537, 1,537. They would like to buy cheaper, 1,537. And what did they do? 1,365. So yes, they were able to get cheaper, lower price. So that's very good. 
But the key to remember is you can never go below the resistance. So kind of a key point there, right? In this case, the buyer cannot go above, the seller cannot go below. So you can be at it, you can be exactly at your resistance, and that's okay too. But of course, the further away from the resistance you are, the better. So if you're the buyer, you save more money. If you're the seller, you make more money. And that's your resistance here. Your weighted average price compared to your resistance. Now there's no flex points here. This is going to impact your score, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's look at another example for a seller. So in this case, we have a seller and the seller has a resistance also, resistance price of 1334. So they would need to sell for 1334 or higher because they want to make more money. They want to sell at a higher price. So 1334, well, let's look at what they did. Here's their weighted average price and they have 1432, so that's higher, right? So they were able to sell higher. And again, it's a very basic calculation, right? You have your deals over here, and then your groups, the prices, and the units. So basically it's a per unit kind of price coming out because we divide it all out to come out to the average. And that's why we call it the weighted average price. Now we're going to look at the inventory, which we've kind of talked about a little bit when we were talking about your flex points. Remember the buyer and seller have a different situation, but this is specifically going to show you the inventory. So this is how much you bought if you are the buyer. So here we see bought, why? Because this group is a buyer. And remember when you're the buyer, you cannot go over, cannot go over your max. And you can see the message here is pretty clear. Let me zoom in. I want to show you the message. If you go over your maximum purchase, you will cause bankruptcy. You will lose the game. And here we can see the program will tell you what's your maximum for this time. So remember that when you roll your dice, you can choose to adjust this number. So in this RPG, the target was 1000, but they chose to increase, this group increased it by 100. So they have 1100 maximum that they can buy. And you can see how many did they actually buy? Well, here we can see they actually bought 700. So they're under 1,100. Could they buy 1,000? Yes, that's okay. Could they buy 1,100? Yes, that's okay. But they cannot go over 1,100. So they are 70% of their original target and 64% of their modified target. So that's okay. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's only bad if you go over what you definitely cannot do. Of course, if you make some good deals, if you find some good opportunities to buy, then you should buy more, but you cannot go over this limit. Now, if you're a seller, it's different. If you're a seller, you can go over your limit. But when you go over your limit, what will happen? You'll have to pay flex points, remember? So if you go over the max, then you're gonna to need to pay flex points 
for every 10% more of the production. So here you can see that in this case, this group had a maximum of 1,030 and they went ahead and they were able to sell 1,035 and that may have cost them for their production, but that's okay. So here we just see that they made 100%, that's okay. Could they go under this? Could they be less? Could they, for example, maybe sell 100 units only? Yeah, that's okay. Could they sell 1,000 units? Yeah, that's okay. Could they sell 10,000 units? Yes, they could, but they will have to pay for the more production, for the extra production, and that's in the flex point section. So it's very important to pay attention to this because if you get it wrong and you're a buyer, you will lose the game. You'll lose, you have bankruptcy. You bought too much, you cannot take that much. And if you are a seller, you need to pay attention because you have to pay extra to produce more. Next, we're going to look at making a very basic and important mistake. And that's the section here called deals mismatched. This is very rare. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen if you're not careful when you're typing in your numbers. So let's take a look at how does this happen? Deals mismatched. Remember, we said that we have the buyer and the seller, and they're going to make a deal. And remember, they need to have a deal ID, and the idea must be the same one for both of them. So they're going to both use the same one. Here's an example, like this number here, 4461 and 4461, so it's the same number. And maybe one group is 19, and one group is 2. And so this deal is from group two, going to 19. And this is from group 19, going to two. So yes, this is exactly right. This is the way it should be. And here we can see this number here, which is roll. One is going to be the buyer. And minus one is going to be the seller. Okay, so that's all very good so far. We also have a number of units and price, and we have quality and delivery. Now these numbers should all be exactly the same because group 19 sent this to two and group two sent this to two and that's because they agree. They agreed on the delivery speed. They agreed on the quality of the product. They agreed on the price of the product. So these numbers must be the same. However, if we look carefully here, we can see there's a problem. So this is the same deal, the same ID, but the units are not the same. There's a difference of 900 units. So there's something wrong with this. Now, who is wrong? Is group two wrong? Or is group 19 wrong? I don't know. We have no way to know. But it's wrong. So what happens when it's wrong? It'll come into this deals mismatched. So these deals are gonna be a problem. Now, what can you do? Well, obviously they're not going to work. They're not going to be completed deals. They're incomplete. But because the groups both sent the same number, there's really nothing you can do except to cancel the deal. So remember, you can cancel the deal and both sides should go ahead and cancel. 
If they cancel the deal, then it will go away and everything will be okay. Next, we're going to look at sending a message or receiving a message because we've already looked at sending a message. Remember, sending a message is not very hard. You need to go up to your actions area and you say message a group and you indicate the group you're sending to the subject and the message. Okay, so what happens when you receive a message? When you receive a message, you scroll down your app and you have a section here called messages received and these messages received will only be for this RPG round so if we're in RPG 3 these messages will only be RPG 3 not 2 not 1 only 3 we can see here the messages are very simple it tells you who it's from and who it's to and it'll be to you so this is group 1 and we have a message from group three and another message from group three and a date and the content. You can use English or Chinese or any other language you like. And that's messages. Very simple. Next, we're going to look at the marketplace. What is the marketplace? The marketplace is a place where you can see all the different groups and what they're doing, how well they're doing. And you can use this to figure out if you need to contact them or you want to try to make a deal with them. Or you can see how maybe some of your friends are doing and if you want to contact them to make a relationship. So this marketplace section will list all of the players, all of the groups in the current RPG. However, you can also look at other RPGs. So you can use this drop down menu and you can look at previous RPGs. So if we want to look at, for example, RPG one, we choose one and then press go. The page will refresh and then we come down here and we are now looking at RPG 1. We can't change RPG 1. We can only play the current RPG, but we can at least see what the marketplace is. So if we look at the marketplace, what are some important things we can look at? Well, probably the most important thing to look at is the number of buyers and sellers. If the number of buyers and sellers is almost the same, then the opportunity for buyers and sellers is equal in the market. However, if the number of buyers and sellers are very different, then you may have a special opportunity and it may influence your thinking or your strategy or your tactics. So for example, let's say that there's 10 buyers And then let's say that there's 28 sellers. And what do we have in, in this case? There's way more sellers than buyers. So what does that tell us? That tells us that if you're a buyer, you may have a good opportunity to find sellers who will give you a good deal because they're going to be hard to find buyers. The market is out of balance. It's not balanced. What would a buyer do? Well, maybe a buyer could wait until later to try to get a better deal. What about sellers? What should they do? Maybe the sellers should hurry up and try to get buyers as soon as possible and lock them in, for example. There's many strategies and tactics you can use. It's up to you but this is an interesting number to look at.
Okay, the next thing we can look at is each group and what they're doing. So you can see what the current score of each group is. You can not only see the score, but you can also see the rank. And remember, why is the rank important? Because if you get higher rank, like number one, number two, number three, the top 10%, remember, you get some extra points, you get some extra reward. So getting higher up in the rank is better. At the same time, maybe being low in the rank is an opportunity to make a sacrifice or build a relationship or maybe send some flex points to help someone or to show your relationship. So this helps you to see some idea of what's going on. We scroll down here. We can see some groups here like seller minus one, seller minus one. That's doing not very good at all, current score. And the ranking, let me look at the ranking here. The ranking is, yeah, two would be second in the class. Let me see, do we have a one here? Three is third in the class. One, one is number one in the class. 98 percentile. So 98 percentile means they're almost the hundredth percentile, the highest possible score. You can even see we have some negative scores. Is that possible? Yes, negative scores are possible because they've done something wrong. And that's very, very bad. Of course, that's going to push you down and give you a zero percentile. Okay, so that's a great way to get an idea of what's happening in the marketplace. And you can look at this at any time during the game. You don't need to wait until the end. You can see this during the game right from the beginning as soon as some groups start making deals. And you can choose to look at other rounds to understand the history of other groups. Now we're going to look at what maybe is the most important part of the RPG if you want to do well is to understand how the scoring works. Now the scoring is very important and you need to understand it. But the reason to understand it is to help you to make your planning and to help you make your strategy and to talk with your group members. So that's the real reason to understand it. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now, the first thing to remember is that the buyers and the sellers are going to be different. They're not the same. So buyers and sellers are somewhat different in this calculation. Let's begin by looking at a seller here. So in this case, we have a seller's example. We begin by looking at the first part of the score here. So I've divided up into rows. So top row, middle row, bottom row. We have the average weighted price here minus the resistance price. So the weighted average price minus the resistance price here, the difference is 14. So if you look at the numbers carefully, 1348 and 1334, the resistance price is 1334 and the seller, remember a seller, the goal for the seller is to always sell above the resistance because they want to get a higher price. So here we see that they sold for 1348 and the resistance 1334, so they are above. And that gap is here. And then we go ahead and we're going to divide that by the resistance price. So we're getting a fraction. 
and then we're going to times that by 100. And then we end up with this number right here, which in this case is 1.09. So, if you can get a better price, if you're a seller, you get a higher price, and if you're a buyer, you get a lower price, that's going to help this part of your score here. Now, a small difference like this obviously does not have a big impact, but if you can make this difference bigger and bigger, then it will have a bigger impact. And of course, if it gets smaller and smaller, that's going to be a problem. But it's hard to get this really big, right? You're not going to be able to sell in a market for way more money, way higher price. And also the other side, if you're a seller, the buyer has a resistance level also. So it's really hard to get this number here to be huge but it can be helpful to make it as big as you can, of course. Now, usually in this kind of case, when it comes to the price, if one side wins, the other side definitely loses. So this is a win-lose situation. There's no way around it. If one pays less and one pays more, and the vice versa the other way. There's really no way around that, buyers and sellers. In the next line, we have our flex points. Now, flex points, remember, are different. Flex points is not win-lose. It's win-win, lose-lose, everything's possible. Because when you get your flex points, you're basically working against yourself. You're trying to achieve your goals. The more you achieve your goals and the more you surpass your goals, the more flex points you get. The more deals you make, the more flex points you get. And a deal can be good for you and good for the other side too. So it's very possible this can be win-win. It could also be win-lose, but in any case, it could be anything. So here, we're gonna take this 1.09, and then we're going to plus to our flex points. And here, we're gonna end up with this 53 here. And then we're going to times the importance. Now, this is a really biggie. Remember at the beginning of the RPG, you can choose your importance. And if an important RPG means it's very important. It's vital to the company. So if you're going to do well, you do really well. And if you're not going to do well, then it's not so important. So for example, if this importance was one, and this final score is gonna be very different. But why would you make it one? Well, maybe you chose one because you knew that you were not going to do well. Maybe you thought you would help another group. Maybe you thought you could cooperate or build a relationship, but you don't wanna to lose too much. You don't wanna make your score too bad. So you go ahead and you make this one. And that way you can move some of your points to another area and maybe cooperate with another group. It's all up to you. It's a lot of trade-off. Nothing in the game is for free. Everything costs something. Okay, so there we go. We take the 53.09 times by six, and we end up with 318.55. So you can see this really pushes it up. Then you're going to go ahead and times that into your inventory sold. So here you're a seller. If you're a buyer, it would be the buying side. We'll look at that in a minute. So 100% of course is best. If you only had 50% of your inventory sold, what would happen? This number would be cut in half. So selling more of your inventory is useful. Getting a better price is useful. Having an important situation is useful and more flex points, really important. And then we end up with our final score here, 318.55. So price, all here, resistance, flex points, 
important inventory. If you think about it this way, it's not too hard. It's pretty straightforward. Those are the key ideas. Okay, that was a seller. Let's look at a buyer. In this case, this is a buyer. And we can see that it must be a buyer because we reverse this beginning here. We have resistance price minus the weighted average price because the buyer, of course, wants to get a lower price. So their resistance price was 1537 and they were able to buy for 1362 lower than their resistance. So good for them. And they ended up at this difference, 175. And so you can see the bigger this difference, the bigger this gap, the better, because this fraction ends up here with a bigger number. So we go ahead and turn it into a fraction, then turn it into 100. So basically it's a percentage. We end up with 11.39, good. Then we're going to add that to the flex points. So this kind of becomes similar to flex points. And here we have our flex points, 15. So we end up with 26.39. And then we have importance. So you can see here what happened. They did pretty good. They did pretty good here. And their flex points, not bad. But their importance they set to low. It's two. Uh, one would be even lower, but two is pretty low. So this is not going to increase their score very much. So basically just doubling it and we get 52.77. And then they didn't buy all their inventory, 70%. So now we're gonna get 70% of 52.77. And we end up with the final score of 36.94. All right, so again, not too bad, right? Basically we're looking at price, the gap, so if you're a seller, you want to sell for higher. And if you're a buyer, you want to buy for lower. Our flex points, which is the quality gap, the delivery gap, and making more deals. And the importance, how important is this deal to your company? And then the inventory. So basically, you have these one, two, three, four areas to really pay attention for your score. We end up with this 36.94. Okay, so the key here is remember to meet with your group members. Okay, I can't emphasize this enough. Here's my three group members. And before the RPG begins, you need to make a plan. And how do you make a plan? I think you need to sit and look at this scoring situation and understand and then make a goal and then from that goal roll your dice then distribute your points and then in the end don't forget we have many rounds of the rpg not just once so sometimes you may make your importance high sometimes you may choose to make your importance low sometimes you may emphasize flex points and sometimes you may emphasize price sometimes you may emphasize relationship building it's all up to you.